In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a few of the different methods for cutting holes into your mesh objects. The first and simplest method is to use the delete tool to delete your geometry. So with our default cube, we're going to hit the tab key to enter edit mode. Then we're going to go to face select, which you can see up here. So we have vertex select, edge select and face select. We're going to go on to face select and select the top face. So we're going to turn this cube into a box. To delete the top face, either press the X key or the delete key on your keyboard. This will bring up the delete menu. We have a lot of options here, but the one we want to choose is faces. Select faces and you delete the top face leaving an empty open top box. Now there is a problem with creating a model like this. In Blender and 3D modeling in general, we have what are known as normals, which represent the inward and outward directions of a specific piece of geometry. In other applications like game engines, the inside of your geometry will not be rendered which is part of an effect known as backface culling. For example, if we were to open up this menu here and turn on backface culling, you would be able to see the inside of this box. So the solution here is going to be to add some thickness to this box so that we have faces on both the inside and the outside of the object. To do that, we're going to add the solidify modifier. So press tab to go back into object mode, then go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, and then select solidify. Then increase the thickness to the level that you want. You should now see that we have some thickness to this box. If we turn back face culling on again, there will be no change to our model, which is exactly what we want to see. A similar method that is also useful for creating holes in the less complex objects is the combination of the inset and extrude tools. I'm just going to hit Ctrl and Z to revert my cube back to the way it was before. Then I'm going to select the top face again. And this time, instead of deleting it, I'm going to inset this geometry. You can insert your geometry by coming over here to the tool shelf and selecting this option, Insert Faces, or you can use the I key on your keyboard. So I'm going to hit I, and I'm just going to move my cursor inwards to create my inset. This is going to represent the thickness of the box. So we're basically creating the same object here. So I'm going to make it about this thick, left click to confirm, and then I'm going to use the extrude tool. But rather than extruding out of the object, I'm going to extrude in towards it. To extrude, we select either this option here in the tool shelf, or we use the E key on our keyboard. So press E, and then you can see it's actually already locked to the normal, which is on the Z axis at the moment. I can just bring that down to about here, left click, and once again, I've got my box. And the structure is very similar to that of the previous method, where we deleted the top face and then used the solidify modifier. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. So I'm just going to hide my default cube for now. And then I'm going to add in a cylinder object. So Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. Let's do the same thing again, but this time with our cylinder. I'm just going to go to the operator panel here, and I'm gonna make sure that my cap fill type is set to Ngon. I'm then going to hit the tab key to enter edit mode, select my top face and do the same method. So hit the I key to inset, left click to confirm, and then the E key to extrude down. 
I'm not using the best angle here, but I'm just going to play it until I see it peek out at the bottom, bring it up a little bit, left click. Now, one thing that I could do to make this easier is just use wireframe. So I'm just going to hit Control and Z to undo my extrusion. I'm going to change my viewport shading to wireframe. And then I'm going to hit E again and extrude down. And now we can see both the inside and outside of the model. So we can better tell where our face is being extruded to. Left click to confirm. And we have what looks like a glass. If you are looking to create more complex shapes, then a better solution would be to use the Boolean modifier. So I'm going to effectively combine the two objects that we've been using so far. I'm going to, first of all, delete my cylinder. And I'm going to not use this cube. We're just going to keep that hidden for now. I'm going to use a new one with Shift A, Mesh, Cube. And then I'm going to add another object. So I'm going to hit Shift A again, and I'm going to add a cylinder. I'm then going to change the radius and the depth. So I'm going to change the depth so that it's slightly higher. And I'm going to reduce the radius to about 0.8. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the cylinder as a Boolean. And we're going to cut two holes through our cube object. Now, to make this easier, I'm going to change the display of the cylinder itself. So make sure the cylinder is selected. Then go to the properties panel and go to object properties. It's the yellow square icon here. Come down to where it says viewport display and open this up. Then scroll down to where it says display as. Currently, it's set to textured. We're going to change this to wire. And now we enable wireframe for that specific object. The next step is to add the Boolean modifier to our cube. Select it and then go to the modifiers tab. Select add modifier and then select Boolean. We have three Boolean types here to work with. Intersect, Union and Difference. One of these is going to be the correct option for us. So let's start with intersect. If we just bring this out a little bit so we can see, we have our operand type, which is set to object and the object itself. We're going to left click here and then we're going to choose our cylinder object. As soon as we do that, you can see that the cube has effectively morphed into a cylinder itself. The intersect method will maintain any geometry where the two objects are overlapping. This isn't what we want though. So let's try a different one. What about union? Well, the union option will actually combine the outside of each mesh. So we have the top and bottom of the cylinder and it's effectively being combined with our cube object. If I just hide my cylinder here, you can still see the cylinder, but not the wireframe. If we zoom into the inside of our object, I actually can't see anything at the moment. So that might be because we have back face culling enabled. So we'll turn that off, go inside. And this is the inside of our object. So you can see the Boolean has effectively extruded out circles from the top and bottom faces. This is effectively the opposite to what we're looking for. We want to cut holes here at the top and bottom. So now let's try the difference option. Left click. And now we can see that we have a hole going from the top all the way through to the bottom. If I was to select my cylinder object and just grab it on the Z axis and bring it up and left click to confirm, you will now see that we don't go all the way through because of where the Boolean shape is positioned. 
because the bottom of the cylinder is within the cube, it doesn't create a hole on the bottom. This is the power of the Boolean modifier, as we can move our Boolean to create different shapes in real time. Another method that we can use with the Boolean modifier is to use an entire collection instead of a single object. If you want to create, for example, holes in each side of this cube that are circular, then it's going to take a while just to model that object to use as a Boolean. It would be far easier to just use several cylinders, rotate them, and then use the entire collection as your Boolean. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to hit Control and Z a few times to reset the position of this cylinder. Then I'm going to hit Shift and D to create a duplicate. I'm going to hit R to begin the rotation. I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis and I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and press enter. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to select the original cylinder, hit Shift and D to create a duplicate, then hit R, then X to lock to the X axis for rotation and type in 90. Press enter and we now have three cylinders. But at the moment, only one of these cylinders is affecting the geometry of our cube. What we're going to do is we're going to hold the shift key and select all three cylinders, but not the cube. Then we're going to hit the M key. This is going to bring up our move to collection menu. Select new collection and then name your collection. I'm going to name this as Boolean. Press enter and then press OK. Now we have our Boolean collection, but at the moment the Boolean is only set to a single object still. We now need to select the cube object and change the operand type from object to collection. This effectively deactivates our original Boolean, but now what we can do is we can come here, left click and select Boolean and you will see that all three cylinders are now affecting our cube object, creating our more complex shape. This way you are able to create a wide variety of different shapes using even the simplest of objects by combining your Boolean modifier with a collection operand. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go back in time a little bit. I'm going to go to object and just have our cylinder selected. I'm just going to hide the other two cylinders because one thing that you may be wondering at this point is how can we get it so that we can create the shape of the hole but also not have the shape continue down in towards the cube. So what I mean by this is how can we create it so that it looks like the original box that we created where we can basically see into our cube but this time maintain that circular hole. Well, what we can do here is just use a solidify modifier on the cube. I'm going to select my cube, then I'm going to go add modifier and I'm going to select solidify and increase the thickness. Initially, it doesn't look as though anything has changed here. What we need to do is we need to move our solidify modifier above our boolean so that the solidify takes effect first and then the boolean will use the data after the solidify modifier is applied. So we're going to click and drag the solidify modifier above the boolean and release. As soon as we do that, you can actually see that the mesh changes again. If we just hide the cylinder, you can see that we have the hole that is created by the boolean. But inside of our mesh, the cube remains exactly as it was before. The only difference now is it has some thickness. 
So we can open up the solidify modifier and we can increase the thickness or decrease it as we would with a normal cube. If we were to select our cylinder again and push it through our model and left click, then you can see that our holes are created either side, but we can also see the rest of the cube. So it's not a tube going from one end of the cube to the other. And again, if we were to bring back our cylinders, select our cube, and change the operand type to collection. Once again, you can see the effect of the boolean creating the holes, but with the solidify modifier, if we just hide that boolean collection, the rest of the cube will maintain its shape. So that's just another way in which you can use the boolean modifier to create holes in your objects. But there's one more thing that I would like to show you and that is creating custom shapes using the knife tool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete both of these modifiers and we can just keep the boolean hidden for now. This time I'm going to hit the tab key to enter edit mode and what I want to do as I press 1 to go into front orthographic view is I want to create a very customizable shape here. I want to create a five point star. Now it's going to take a while to model a five point star, but a much quicker approach would be to simply cut the shape into our geometry. To use the knife tool, I'm going to press K on my keyboard. You will see as we hover the cursor over our object that we get a green square and a different looking cursor. This indicates that the knife tool is active. So I'm going to find a location as a starting point about here and I'm going to left click. I don't even have to hold down my left mouse button. I just left click and I begin to create a, an edge. I'm going to move the edge down here and left click. This does not confirm the knife tool it merely allows me to extrude a second edge. So I'm going to now move the second edge to about here, left click. The third edge will come to about here, left click. And I will begin to create the shape of my five point star. So it's gonna take me a couple of seconds and it's not gonna be perfect but I'm just going to create that five point star. And once I create the loop, you can see it snaps in. I'm just going to left click, that creates the loop, but our knife tool is still active. So to confirm the knife tool, I'm just going to hit the enter key. That creates my five point star, and it also adds another couple of edges to just make the topology just a little bit simpler. Now what I can do is I can select this five point star, this shape, then I can hit the X key and delete the face. And now I've created a hole in the shape of a five point star. Remember that when we use something like a delete tool, we can see the inside faces of our geometry. So when using such a method, it's best also to add your solidify modifier and give your shape some thickness. These are some of the most popular methods of cutting holes into your objects in Blender 3D.